Welcome to Dying Generation. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is... Stephen Scott Norfolk. So what's going on this week? How are the puppies? Puppy. The puppies? The puppies? Are, they're they're killing me. I think I, I... Didn't I say something last episode about how the puppies were killing me? Well, that's why I wanted to check up on them. Yeah, they're, uh, yeah, they're, they're killing me. I just, uh, need to give, need to, need to give them away, I guess, cause yeah. I don't want to pay, you know, for a dog obedience school, uh, for my dog and then have my roommate's dog totally untrain it yeah. and stuff, cause his dog is a holy terror. Uh, it just is a crazy, wild, I, I mean, it's, you know, like living with a jackal. Literally, you know, except it doesn't gnaw on your bones. But, uh, but yeah, it chews up everything. It ripped up a section of carpeting in the, uh, in the hallway near the kitchen that, yeah. you know, they're going to charge us to replace the carpeting in the entire apartment because of, you know, I'm sure, because you know how apartment complexes are. Yeah. And, uh, chewed up the power cord to the, uh, DVD player, like chewed completely through it in like two or three places. I'm afraid to get a frigging couch or something and come home one day and have the cushions completely ripped apart, you know, and stuff. Oh. So I'm like, so I'm like, okay, do do I want to sacrifice my comfort for this dog to be able to stay here? Uh, fuck no. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to talk to my uh, my roommate and see if maybe we can just get rid of both dogs. Yeah. Because I was really only getting the puppy, uh, Charlemagne, for the the 19 year old girlfriend, and she wanted a puppy, and I was like, okay, we can have a puppy, but you have to take care of it. But now that looks like you know the whole thing with the 19 year old isn't going to happen. Yeah. So you know what the fuck do I need a puppy for? <laughs> Apparently to piss and shit everywhere. Uh, you know, I've never I've never seen a dog that little crap that much. It's oh, it's like it's like a physical uh, impossibility. It's like there's an alternate universe in his bowel system that they're just shoving shit from like five or six different dogs through his system. You know, <laughs> it's like a no, Taiwanese no. Lincoln log factory or something. <laughs> no, that does not sound pleasant at all. <laughs> no, it's not. You know. What sucked is is the the uh, week we moved into the apartment he had diarrhea. Uh huh. Yeah, and you can't pick up diarrhea. You have to leave it on the floor till it dries so you can pick it up, or you have to scrape it up with like a credit card or something, you know. And uh, so got the stuff scraped up and then bought some pet odor remover and uh stain remover stuff and it worked really good and, you know finally right. got the living room all cleaned up but you know then had the living room clean and then uh my roommate's dog tears up a cardboard box and uh insoles to a pair of shoes and we don't have a vacuum cleaner so our living room is just the entire floor is just covered with little pieces of cardboard and little pieces of insole just it looks like a fucking tornado went through accented by turds you know, to be uh-huh. tasteful. Yeah. Yeah, so. I also got a free mattress. I inspected, free mattress it. I, I inspected it for bed bugs. It is a king-size pillow top that is very comfortable. It has some stains on it, but, you know, what mattress doesn't? Have uh, you know, it, it has off with it? No, I haven't. I'm, I'm afraid to do that. Oh. I'm just always, I mean, I'm just concerned that the, you know, I don't know, the Masons are going to kick in my door and, you know, put me put me in a room and throw away the room because I tore the tag off. I live in, I live in, huh? Is it the Masons doing that now? The Masons? Well, I was trying to think of, you know, somebody terrifying. and I mean, they're, they're pretty clandestine. I don't think the Illuminati cares much about the, you know, tag on yeah. mattress, but the Masons yeah. probably do. The Masons would probably put their boot in your ass uh, for taking a tag off. You, you, you know what the Illuminati is really concerned with? Huh? That you don't use your blow dryer while you're sleeping. Ah, oh, yeah. 
you 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 do that and they just come running out of the closet in the dark. Yeah. You know, you'd think it was a fucking John Carpenter movie with the Illuminati uh, come rushing out the closet. <laughs> yeah. you know, big old, big old crowd of them. <laughs> and of course, uh, nobody knows what language the Illuminati speaks. I mean, it, it's possible they could just jibber jabber at you and, you know, you're confused. The hair dryer is still going and, uh, you know, it's a total impasse. So, so they make sounds kind of like chipmunks. Kind of like chipmunks, yeah. Uh huh. Oh, I like to think that they talk the Oopa Loopa language. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, why? I want to see that movie again. <laughs> I know. Why? Why? Why else would there be an LSD sequence in in uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? Yeah. You know, just because it was the sixties, man. Huh? Dude, yeah, I'm telling you, it was the, just because it was the sixties, and in the sixties, yeah. you had to have a weird fucking sequence someplace. I mean, mm-hmm. they even snuck it into goddamn Charlie for Christ's sakes. Oh yeah, yeah. You remember that? He gets all smart and shit, and uh-huh. and he and he he wanders into a, I think it was a bar at first, and there were all just all these psychedelic colors and girls dancing in go-go boots and shit like that. And uh-huh. Then he's then he's in in like the desert or something. Yeah. Standing and then there are all these motorcycles going around him and shit. Uh, that's <laughs> like okay, the most psychedelic movie I've ever seen. Have you ever seen Whatever Happened to Rosemary's Baby? Uh, no, but it is on YouTube. I've kind of passed by because I remember it being a made TV movie. And I didn't it, is, it is a psychedelic freak show. Yeah. I mean, every second of that movie is just a, you know, acid trip waiting to happen. <clears throat> yeah. That was a huge truck passing by. Really? Yeah. A huge truck. That's like, I don't know why I thought of this, but I was like, you know, driving with my friend Ari and, and, and all of a sudden we see like six cop cars with their lights on just hauling ass down the road, right? Yeah. And I said, up, oh, someplace has fresh donuts. <laughs> <laughs> and he just cracked up laughing. I'm like, yeah, that's what it is. Fresh donuts and kolache somewhere. They got to haul over, they got to haul over there before they cool off. You know, it's like, uh, you know, we're coming back from Houston. We're driving down this one road, 288, and, uh, you know, usually there isn't that much traffic on it. But this day, all of a sudden, there's lots of traffic. And my roommate is like, man, I've never seen so much traffic on here. And it gets really slow, and we're down to, like, 25 miles an hour on this freeway-looking thing. And then all of a sudden, we come to a certain point, and people just start speeding up. And we're like, uh, uh, okay, what the fuck was the problem? You know, it only takes one asshole with a heavy foot on the brakes to totally bring a freeway to a standstill for absolutely no goddamn reason at all. Oh, fuck yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So, there you go. That's my life. <laughs> you know. Yeah, and we'll be, we'll be getting snowed here, so then everybody will really come out. Uh, here's the thing about that, though, that I, I really wonder. Because <clears throat> whenever it snows... Mm-hmm. Okay. You hear it from everybody. Okay. Uh-huh. Assholes don't know how to drive in the snow. Yeah. Somebody has okay. to be the asshole. Nobody specifies exactly what knowing how to drive in the snow means. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that's like whenever it rains heavily down here, my brother calls it a Texas blizzard because mm-hmm. everybody slows down to like five miles an hour, you know. Uh-huh. Holy crap, there's, you know, there's a two-millimeter well, sheet man. of water on the road. That's me in the snow. I get in the slow lane, I go as fast as I feel I need to go. That's it. Oh, I don't. It's all go around. <laughs> no, no, whenever I had that four uh, four by four uh, Ford Explorer, I just haul ass down the road. I'd be one of those people doing like 50 on the snow, yeah. you know, and stuff. Because my car had good brakes and tires and stuff, and yeah, I just drive like a crazy person. 
<laughs> so I was never the asshole holding things up. You know, I was the asshole that was going to kill somebody on accident. <laughs> you know, I was the one that was going to take out a minivan full of children yeah. in the snow, you know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. No, I'm I remember. Just, you want to go faster? Don't be in the fucking slow lane. I'm in the slow lane. I'm going fucking slow. Fuck you. Yeah. That's like that's like down here. I go to the speed limit. I always drive the speed limit, you know, never five miles or ten miles over. And people, you know, go around me all the time. And I'm like, good, go right ahead. You know, enjoy that ticket. Have a nice day. Yeah, you know, you un- unless go ahead and I'm, go around me if you want. Yeah, and uh, unless I'm on the road alone or pretty much alone, you know, yeah, and that's a different fucking story because it's not so much the snow and the rain; it's the other assholes. Mm-hmm. I don't know what they're gonna do. I want to stay the fuck away from them. So, like when I was working this job and I was getting off at eleven thirty at night, uh-huh. you know, and we would have a snowstorm or something like that. There would be nobody on the fucking road. Yeah. You know. So I would get in the middle lane. I would do sitting 55, 65, whatever. Because if I spin out, there's really nothing here to hit. Uh-huh. It's you fun. Know? It's fun at that point, you know. You know, so I'm it's like, woo, that, throw your hands in the air and shit as you're spinning. If there if there are other cars on the road, it's like, Psh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go by. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> you know. Yeah. The, the thing that used to fast I'm fucking concerned about. Yeah, because you never know what they're going to do. Yeah. The the thing that used to fascinate me about my ex-wife's driving yeah. was how much she looked in the rearview mirror. She wouldn't even be changing lanes or anything, and she'd keep be looking in her rearview mirror and, and bitching at the person behind her. Come get out of my ass! God damn it! Bitch! God damn Bitching about the person behind her? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? I said, don't... Don't even worry about the fucking person. But they're about to run into me. No, they're not. You know, first of all, if you'd stop tapping the brakes every five seconds, you wouldn't have to worry about them running into the back of you. And don't worry yeah. about what they're doing. Just look in your back mirror whenever you're changing lanes or something. But no, she right. would just, I mean, almost, she would look in the mirror more than she'd look out the front of the car. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, are we driving backwards here? What the, uh, but I don't, yeah. <laughs> Did I mention ex-wife? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> because I used to love her, but it's all over now. <laughs> yeah, I don't care what's going on behind me much. <laughs> Neither do I, unless somebody slams into me, and then, you know, then I check the camera, you know? Yeah. When I review the tape or something, but yeah, Jesus Christ, she'd just be constantly looking up in the rearview mirror, looking up in the rearview mirror, and cussing at him the entire time. Just, it, it was like a drill bit, just like, yeah. right into the side of my skull, you know, with the, oh my God, why are they on my head? Just And yeah, she sounded exactly like that, actually. So, anybody who knows her can tell you. I know she I, sounds like a Muppet, but she's not. She's a real I, human being. I met her. <laughs> yeah, so I know, and her voice is kind of piercing, which is interesting. Because I got so used to her voice when I was married to her that it, I really didn't notice how high-pitched it was and, and, I guess, you know, like childish-sounding. Yeah. And so I'm talking to some other women that are her height, four foot eleven, and their voices are, you know, fairly normal voices for women. And so I often talk to them, you know, for like six months a year, and then I, I had occasion to call my ex-wife, and I, I get her voicemail message, and I'm like, oh, my God. I can't believe how, how high pitch it sounds like a friggin' 10-year-old, <laughs> you know, which makes me feel bad, because whenever I hear her voice during sex, I get hard as a rock. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be here all week, ladies and gentlemen. Try the veal. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. But, uh, yeah, I never noticed how high her voice was, really. I thought all short chicks had high voices like that, and I guess not. There was this one, though, the the psycho that I talked about a couple of weeks ago. Right. Um, I mean, she sounded like a fucking teamster or something. I mean, she was gruff, gruff sounding. And uh, yeah. she uh, works in the oil refinery. She's a plant operator and stuff, so she run guys all the time. She was a little bit masculine in her behavior and stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, her, her voice was like, not as, quite as low as mine, but pretty close. Uh-huh. And I guess it was from, you know, breathing in all the chemical whatever, uh, that they process oils with. 
Right. And so, but yeah, I haven't met any other short women that had a high pitched voice like my like my ex wife. Huh. It's weird. I I guess you know when her balls drop, I guess her voice will even out. That's possibly. Yeah. Possibly. You can always hope. I, you know, always hope. I just I just always tend to remember more the look that was constantly on her face. Oh, the grimace. Yeah. You mean the pinched up between the eyebrows, middle of her forehead thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. She, you, know, you know, she has, like, deep crevices that go all the way down to the bone because of that. And my daughter yeah. has them, too, because my daughter makes that face, too. And so she's got those same lines in her forehead right between her oh, eyes. Really? And yeah. Oh, yeah. It's bad. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Well, that's kind of what I had, I, I kind of thought her face was, like, just always like that. No, she made it that way. You know that thing, well, you know, yeah. your mom well, told yeah. you, you know, if you don't stop making that face, it's going to stay that way? Yeah. Guess what? <laughs> mom it stayed right. that way. Yeah, mom was right. It stayed that way. Yeah, but that's, she, I, you know, Jesus, the, she was the most dour looking person I've ever met. And I mean, yeah. her mouth naturally turned down at the corners. That's just how her mouth was. Right. But she just insisted on frowning with that kind of mouth. And it's just like, you know, it was almost like a, uh, you know, a friggin' one of those hanging spaghetti mustaches is what her mouth right. looked like, you know, because it was just, then she got jowls and stuff. And yeah, it's, 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 you know, body's great, you know, still got the body of like a 32 year old and stuff, but yeah, bag that face. <laughs> So, have you heard from the kids at all lately? Oh yeah, they're doing good. They're busy. Both of them are so busy, so 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 very busy. Uh, yeah. um, but I hear from them, yeah, occasionally and stuff. Uh, once every couple of months, maybe. But I remember what it was like whenever I was their age, and I really didn't contact my parents that much either. So, yeah. you know, fuck me. Thank you. You know. <laughs> Dad could go fuck himself, bro. I care. And uh, so, you know, it's that it's that chest now. Whenever they get into their thirties, and they're you know they're you know my daughter's uh, my grandson gets uh, you know to be a, a tween or whatever, and get ready to turn into a teenager, she'll she'll probably be uh, calling me more. You know, my son when he matures more and stuff, and isn't spending twenty four hours a day playing. Uh, you know, Xbox One. He'll have time for me, but right now it's kind of ronery. I'm so ronery. He's still playing Xbox One. He hasn't moved up. That's the new one, Xbox One. That's the new one. Yeah, that's what it's called, Xbox One. Wow. Yeah, it was Xbox and Xbox 360, and they were going to call this one Xbox 720, but instead they called it Xbox One. So I guess the next one's going to be Xbox 2, 3, 4, 5, subsequent, you know, model numbers. And I and to get the su- and to get this and to get the suckers it'll be like, you know, uh Xbox 1.25, Xbox 1.5, Xbox 1.75. So there'd be be like, you know, two new features that you got to pay $300 for. Okay. Cuz that's what cuz that's what Microsoft loves to do, you know, they add like one or two, three new features to Windows, repackage the the GUI and and then, you know, get your fucking $300. Yeah. You know, so they got to do that on the Xbox too. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I'm kind of sure that like Xbox and PlayStation and mobile phone companies are in league with the internet providers. Because holy crap. Because not, not holy that I crap. Surprised, but. Every, every time you turn on a computer, an Xbox, a PlayStation, a cell phone, download updates, download updates, download updates. Yeah. That should just, instead of having that music whenever Windows opens, it should just automatically say, download updates. That should be like yeah. the load. That's how you know your computer's loaded, is it, it asks you to download the updates. You know, so, yeah. And my phone updates shit that I don't even care about, but you can't uninstall because I have Windows Phone. You know, Windows has certain applications you can't uninstall. 
Right. It's the same on the phone. Like, there's this mixed radio. You can't get rid of it. It's like some Nokia product. And uh, this thing called App Social. Oh, my God. It's so fucking stupid. Here, yeah. load this program up, and it'll let you know what other people who are using the Windows phone are downloading in the store. Why don't I just go into the store and look at the downloads number? Yeah. Why Why do I need an application fucking popping messages up every 15 minutes, you know? Yeah. Susie Q why? bought this game. She liked yeah. it. Well, why do I care? Yeah. I can yeah. give a fuck about what Suzy Q downloaded, okay? Is she going to blow me? And fuck her. Uh-huh. You know, that's what I think about Susie Hugh. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I, I, I agree. I agree. I agree. <laughs> Su- Susie Q can blow everyone. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Yep, yeah. so. So, living indoors still. You know, nice thing uh, is, uh, man, being able to cook my own food. Yeah. Oh, my God. You want to talk about firm stools. So nice. Um, Yeah, but getting to cook my own food is great because, like, I literally spent, like, a buck fifty making a meal that at a restaurant or had I had to eat out as many times as this container of chicken noodle soup I made lasted, it would have been, like, $35. Uh Uh-huh. You know, because I got at least like eight servings out of this big old pot of macaroni or uh, uh, chicken and macaroni soup yeah. and stuff that costs like, you know, I got the macaroni free from the uh, food pantry. Uh, uh-huh. I bought the chicken. Uh, my roommate had celery and carrots and onions that I used, so I didn't have to pay for those. All I had to pay for literally was the chicken leg, which was probably like, you know, maybe, maybe a buck fifty. Yeah. And stuff. It's so nice. <laughs> it really is. I mean, not having to spend fifteen or twenty dollars a day on food yeah. every single day, you know, is is really nice. It's hard being homeless, dude. It is not yeah. cheap to be homeless unless you just starve yourself to death. And I was never yeah. one for the Hunger Games. Uh, uh-huh. But now, if somebody so. tries to feed you, they will be arrested. Yeah. Isn't that ridiculous? Isn't that just idiotic? You know? Yeah. Don't feed don't gotten, feed the homeless so. cause what's gonna happen? It, 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 I guess they're using like the animal theory, you know, if you feed the wild animals, the wild animals are gonna come. Yeah. You know, so if if you if you uh you know, go downtown and hand out peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, the homeless people are gonna propagate because you know, in in you know, St. Louis, Missouri, they're here, oh my god, they're handing out peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in Colorado Springs and make a bee line, you know, right to our city. Uh-huh. You know, I I don't think that's gonna happen. I mean, you know, maybe if we, you know, bought them some steak smith or something, I could see traveling halfway across the country for that, but I really don't think that, you know, handing out macaroni and cheese packets or peanut butter and jelly sandwiches is really going to cause a mass migration of homeless people. Yeah. You know, (laughs) so. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's just so ridiculous, and it just seems like, like, it's not even this country anymore. It's like the whole fucking world is just lost, you know? Well, there's no compassion and empathy. Yeah. You know, no compassion yeah. and empathy. There's no, there's no um, common courtesy anymore. Yeah, that shit is is gone. That's a, that's a distant, faded fucking memory, like Boston's first album. You know, it's just, <laughs> you know, gone mm-hmm. and stuff. But uh, yeah, I just uh, don't understand. You know how things are fucked up, and you know I'm gonna piss some people off here right now and you can send all the letters and shit that you want to. I don't give a damn. But uh I I feel like it's the Christians. I really do. I feel like it's religious people because every time I meet somebody who goes to one of these mega churches or really any church at all, they are like the right. most unchristian people I've ever met. They're like, you know, I got mine. God gave me mine. Fuck you, you get yours. Uh-huh. Get a goddamn job. Uh, I'd like to get a job, but I'm starving so badly that I can't even stand up. And that's not my fault. God made sure I had a sandwich today. Maybe you ought to uh-huh. pray. 
Yeah. You know? Uh-huh. So, I, I, mean, I do not you know, disagree at all. You know, it's I've, fucking, I've really... It's fucking horrible. Yeah, I, I've really been getting... I, I can't help it. I've just been getting more and more just anti-Christian the longer I'm alive. Yeah. You know, and... and God forbid we help anybody, or, or, or you know, really, it, it's it's fucking nuts. You know, how how do you how do you even justify your religion? You know. Yeah. Well, uh, my friend, uh, my roommate, actually, uh, kind of clued me into something that hadn't hadn't occurred to me before. But he was like, "Yeah," he said, "You know, you've got Jesus to forgive you of your sins when you die." So. Right. You know, you you go to church, like if you're Catholic, you go to church, you do your uh, confession, you do your penance, and all of a sudden it doesn't matter that you rape somebody, that you stole, that you, you know, uh, uh, you know, killed a baby or something like that. None of that matters because all of it's washed clean by these rituals. So you can be as much of a jerk fucking sinner asshole as you want to because it's all going to wash away with the blood of Christ. Yeah. And that's, yeah. and that's the point of why people go to church, so they can keep being these fucking sacks of shit that are ruining the fucking world. They're like, oh, wait, I'm clean. Jesus, Jesus took my sins away. Yeah. You know, when the, when the entire point of, of Christianity is for you to be Christ-like, for you to act Christ-like, it's not like get out of jail free card. If you see the example that Christ set and you follow and live your life that way. But no, it's not. It's, you know, oh, God's going to give me riches and fame. And I can sin all I want because Jesus' blood is going to wash it away. And Mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's a fucked up mess. And, yeah. Okay, where do they send these uh, comments? Where where do people send the hate mail? Uh, You can express absolute hatred and revulsion on our Facebook page. Just do a search for Dying Generation. You can show how you retch and vomit at the things that we say by following us on Twitter, at Dying Generation. Or if you don't have the balls to do it in public, in a public forum, you can email us at dying at undeadcow.com. And if we like your comments, we may even read them on the air. So get them in here. Love to hear from you. It's not, it's not a debate until there are two sides, people. So come on, give it to us. Or, or, or possibly send you a nice gift of some sort. You know, there could be prizes that can be won. There, there could you be. Know, so, you know, that is a possibility. And then, you know, they need to, they need to consider that. You know, yeah. Who doesn't, who doesn't like a nice prize? Yeah, exactly. And it might be something really cool, like those Jesus candles they have in the Spanish supermarket. Oh, yeah. aren't they awesome? They're awesome. Yeah. They're yeah. so creative and arty. I mean, I mean, not for nothing, you know, but that's how you do set design on a fucking movie, man, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I had, I had written some things out like that. Yeah. Um, you know, just trying to think of set design for this first scene I'm working on, and I was like, what if they're very, very Catholic, like very Spanish or something like that? So it would be a little shrine of the baby Jesus there. Yeah. You know. Well, actually, if they were the Spanish, the there would robe. be. If they were, if they were Spanish, it would be an altar with Mother Mary holding the baby Jesus, because Jesus isn't so yeah. important to the Catholics. He's, he's, you know, sure he's, he's sure he's a miracle, but. Mary's the the miracle because she's the one who had them. So they worship yeah. Mary. You have to you know say your hail Marys and you know yeah. if you're in football you have to throw a hail Mary and you know. Yeah. But that's how I that's go. But yeah, go. that's that's just where you can go to go to you know that's just a theme that you can really go to town with um, when you do in set design. You know? Yeah, that's production value right there. Oh fuck yeah. And yeah. for what? That shit ain't all that expensive. Yeah. You know? Yeah, those candles are like a buck seventy five or some shit. Yeah. You know? I guess because they burn a lot of them. Yeah. 
and then you start sneaking little shit in. You know, you you get your room. <laughs> mm-hmm. You look at your room, and then you figure out all the stuff you need to put in there. Yep. You know, it's like, well, we need some kind of table there, table there, to kind of kind of put everything on. You yeah. know. And then once you get that whole Catholic theme going with the candles and the Mary holding the baby and all that, uh-huh. then starts sneaking in Marvel Marvel action figures. There you go, stuff like that. Sneak them in there like little Easter eggs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> little Easter eggs. I, what I want. What I really want is is it's a piece of film history, not really history, I guess, because nobody gives a crap about this movie but me. But I want the little balled up fetus looking thing from Pumpkinhead that the guy digs up. I don't remember it. I haven't seen Pumpkinhead in years. Yeah, as he digs up this this parcel and and brings it to the old witch lady and she unwraps it. There's this weird ass looking fetus thing. Uh, that's all gray and, and stuff that they do something to, and it becomes pumpkin head. Um, but yeah, I would love to have that like encased in a, like a glass coffee table, you know? Yeah. Sort of like, was, sort of uh, like, sort of like Eddie in the dinner table in Rocky Horror Picture Show, just like whip the, the thing away, the, 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 uh, what do you call it? The, what the hell do you call that? The, uh, uh dining, the tablecloth. Yeah, tablecloth. <laughs> Good Lord. Oh, my God. I, I, My brain stopped working to the point that I'm not sure how my heart kept beating. <laughs> that, was, that was not good. That was that was scary, kiddos. I think I'm going to have to go to the doctor now and have my head examined because, holy crap, I could not come up with tablecloth. It's hell getting old, kiddies. It's hell yes, getting it old, and that's what this show is all about. I'm glad we, we got a little of the dying generation stuff in there because... Man, yeah. Mm-hmm. That was genuine. <laughs> that, that really happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tablecloth. I just say it to myself five times. Tablecloth, 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 tablecloth. Okay, I'm never going to forget. Um, wait, wh- what's, the, what's the thing you put <laughs> Yeah, thank you. I'll be here all week, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, oh that was good. That was, that was uh, I will never forget. Forgot what forget. you were saying. Forgot what mm-hmm. you were saying right there. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like yeah. a, the joke. The joke I used to do as a kid. I I don't want to know what comedian I heard it from, um, but it was like I remember the last thing my father said to me just before he died. He said, "Son." <laughs> You know, I don't know what comedian I got that from, but yeah, it always used to crack me up. <laughs> That's pretty good, though. Mm, it is. <laughs> good stuff. Just watched a uh, film that's on Netflix called Hot uh, Hot Rod. Have you ever seen that? Oh, the uh, yeah, the movie about the guy who's going to jump the motorcycle thing or bicycle or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, fucking love that yeah. movie. Except yeah, we, there's we, we have a we have a small problem here. What's that? My phone is dying. Oh shit. I'm getting the beep. So we unfortunately might have to wrap things up. Okay. Uh watch Bob's Dirty Shorts and you can find that at YouTube at Undead Cow Films on YouTube. And if you're anywhere close to anywhere I am, a link will be appearing shortly. <laughs> um, listen to Dying Generation. Listen to the Pope on Film, which I do with the Reverend Steve Galindo. And we go over movies, and this week we're going to be doing Hot Rod, which is kind of why I brought it up in conversation. Yeah. Um, and that is about it. You can find us on Facebook at, at Dying Generation. Do a search there. Uh Twitter at Dying Generation or email us at dying at undeadcow.com. Cool. Go for it. <laughs> uh, I have no time to pimp. My phone's dying. All right, man. Till next week, I am Bunny Williams and you are Steven Scott Norfolk. 
Have a good night now.